there's a major update coming to WordPress. It's going to come at the end of March, most likely, and there's a big change in there that might startle some people, and I'm going to show you that and the seven total features that are going to be coming to this new version of WordPress, and I'm going to show you two really cool things that they're working on that might change the way we use WordPress in the future. So let's go ahead and jump on into it. Now, whenever there's a major update to WordPress, as soon as you do the update, it's going to take you to an about page that you see right here. Here, and it's going to explain all these changes that went into this update. And so you can see that here. I've never seen such a colorful welcome screen before, but it explains all of those changes. Now, I don't want to waste your time in this video. I'm going to get straight to that breaking change that might startle some people. And I'm going to show you how to deal with it for your website, as well as if you have clients, their website. So whenever you want to create a new page of content or a new post, that what the experience is like is going to be different. So now let me show you. So if I go to add pages and I'm going to jump right into creating a new page by clicking on add new and check this out. What you see immediately or what you don't see immediately, the menu on the left has gone away. This is what's called full screen mode. And what happens is when you do this update, the editing experience in WordPress is going to default on that full screen mode. Now, you don't have to worry about it. It's very simple to get it out of full screen mode. And if you take it out of full screen mode, the next time you go to create a post or a page, it's going to respect the change that you made and not be in that full screen mode. So let me show you how to do that real quick. When you're inside of the editor, on the top right, there's these three dots. And when you click on that, it's gonna reveal some options. And you can see right here, the third option down says full screen mode. And it says work without distraction. When you click on that, it's going to bring back that menu on the left and you're now out of full screen mode. I will say though, that you might wanna to try to get accustomed to using full screen mode. It might be a little shocking and alarming at first, but you're gonna get the hang of it real quick and get really comfortable and familiar with it. But if you're like me and you don't like change that often, it takes a while to get into it, you can go ahead and do this and you won't be disrupted and you can just use WordPress the way that you normally use WordPress. Now the next change is they've totally cleaned up the user interface and you can really see this when you are inside of the full screen mode. A lot of the icons have changed, the spacing between the icons have changed. It's a much more clean experience using Gutenberg and you're gonna notice that it's come a long way since it was released a year and a half ago. Now the third change is called block breadcrumbs. You're really gonna notice this when you have a page of content. So I do have a page open right here and so this is a different site that I have for testing and you can see it's a full page of content. Now whenever I click into anything, say right here, and I'm clicking on this button, if you look on the bottom left down here, you see a breadcrumbs for the module that you're in. And this is going to make it easier to edit what you want to edit and to get into the settings of the element you want to get into the settings for. So you can see I clicked into the advanced button, but if I wanted to edit something in the column, I could click right here and now I have the settings for the column. And if I wanted to edit the settings of the row layout, I can click here and do this. This is actually a feature that I think was first introduced by Thrive Architect. And I'm glad to see that Gutenberg has adopted this. Maybe Thrive Architect saw that in some other building tool, but that's the first time that I have seen it. I think it's something that we should see coming to all builders. Whenever you're clicking into an element, you could see all the different containers that you're in and you can easily back up to make sure you're editing what you want to edit. The next change is kind of a basic one and it is media placement feature. So here's an image, I can click here, I can click on replace and I can easily replace this. There's drag and drop functionality coming to media, media meaning images and also when you're creating galleries, there's some improvements there as well. Now the next new feature is a nice one and it's a new block called buttons. Let me show you how buttons works. So first I'm going to 
to pull buttons up by doing a search for it right there and I'm gonna click enter. So this is how you create a button using the block builder. First, you would enter some text. You can see I entered order now, but here's the new thing. It was not button, it's buttons. That means it's plural. So you can have side by side buttons. So by clicking on this little plus right here, I can easily add a second button. So I'll go ahead and add some text to that right now. And I can continue making additional buttons if I want. Now the next new feature goes along with this and that is the ability to add gradients to certain parts inside of the block builder. In this case I'm going to be able to add gradients to the button background. So now that I've clicked on a button I can pull up the settings panel right here and you can see there's a new option right here where it says background solid or gradient and when I click on gradient there's some gradient examples that I can choose from so I'll go ahead and choose this right here and you can see it's it's already changed or I can go with this one right here and then you have some options to change the angle of this gradient and you can also change the colors of this gradient very easily. Now I'm glad they're doing this because they do need to add some of this polish to the block builder so that you can have more designed elements inside of your pages if you choose to use the block builder. And next we have another new element called social icons. So let me go and create a new new social icon. So I'm going to search for it, social, and there it is, social icons. Now when you first click on it, it's going to show you these default ones. Now there's more than this, but these are the ones that they're going to show you. And these aren't actually live unless you put a URL in it. Now these are links to your social profiles. These aren't sh social sharing icons like uh, you would put on a blog post where someone would click on it and it would pull up a box and they can click a button and it would go to Facebook. That's not what these are. These are just to your social profiles. So if I wanted to add something for YouTube, I would click on it right here and then I'm prompted to enter the address. So I'll go ahead and enter that now. I've gone ahead and entered the address. I'll click on enter and you can see now it's lit up where the other ones are grayed out. Now when I click out of this block, watch what happens. It shrinks down to just the social networks that I added a URL for. You can see there's WordPress, so I can click on it. Now, if I did not want the WordPress uh, I link there, I can easily remove the URL like this, and then I can hit enter, or I can just click off, I'm sorry, and it's now gone, and all I have is the YouTube one right here. Now, if you want to add a social network that you didn't see in that icon list, all you have to do is click on this plus right here, and it's gonna show you all the various social icons that they have there for you, and you can simply click on it, like Skype right there, then click on the icon and enter the address for that. And that's all there is to adding social icons to your website. Now I wanna show you two glimpses into the future of using this block editor. These are features that you could actually access right now by installing the Gutenberg plugin and it will add these features to your website right now. But I wanna just show you these two features because they're quite interesting and it will probably reveal some of the future of what we're looking at here with WordPress. So for this, I'm going to click over to the other website that I have right here. And here's the Gutenberg plugin. I'm going to make sure to activate that so that I will have access to these new features. Okay, so now I'm going to go and click on pages. I'm going to get back into that page that I was uh, showing you just a moment ago. So let me go ahead and click on into that. And so the first thing is very interesting. There is a new concept that they're introducing called block patterns. And what a block pattern is, is a lot of the things you want to build have multiple components. They have a container and then they'll have multiple blocks. For example, what you see right here, think of that as a block pattern pattern. And if you go here, there's a new icon that says block patterns in the top right. And when I click on it, it's going to show some examples of these block patterns. And as I scroll down, you can see they're quite basic right now, but it's essentially a fancy phrase 
for having a pre-designed section. And these are things that we are used to if we're using Elementor, they have their sections, they call them blocks. And if you're using Beaver Builder, it has it as well, along with Thrive Architect. All of these tools already have this concept, but those are all premium paid tools. This is the free editor that's built into WordPress. And these block patterns, I think, have the potential of making Gutenberg very easy to use because we just saw a moment ago some of these page builder-like features that they're trying to bring into the block builder. But now when they add these block patterns, it has the potential of making it very easy for people to build better looking websites. So that was the first new thing that's going to be coming in the future that I wanted to show you. Another one, and this would probably come sooner. Maybe you notice it right here, and it's right here where it says desktop. You didn't see this before, and there's a little drop down arrow. And what this is going to give you is device previews. So this is what it's going to look like on a desktop. But if I want to see what it's going to look like on a mobile device, I can choose mobile and it gives it to me right here. Actually, this is not that accurate. I know what this page looks like and this is not at all what it looks like. So they have a bit of work to do on this feature, but as you can see, it is coming and this is something that is desperately needed if you want to have the block builder be used for building full pages and full designs. You need to be able to see what that's gonna look like on all different devices that someone might be using when visiting your website. Now there's one more thing I wanna show you in this video. I hope I don't get in trouble for sharing this. It's a brand new theme that I've been beta testing and there is a page up where you could get the beta version if you want to try this theme for yourself. Now what's interesting about this theme is it has a modern customizer experience, an amazing header and footer builder that I'm just gonna show you, spend a minute showing you right now. But what's most amazing is that they're adding every feature that you would need in a theme, yet the theme is gonna be completely free. Let's just take a quick look at this theme right now. So I'm still on the site right here. The name of the theme is the Cadence theme. Now Cadence WP, I'll put a link to this in the video description box if you want to take a look at this free theme. Now if you've been using WordPress and different plugins for any amount of time, you no doubt have come across Cadence WP. They have numerous helpful plugins for free inside of the WordPress plugin directory, including the one I'm using right here called Cadence Blocks. It's one of the most popular block building add-ons whose goal is to turn the block builder into more of a page builder like experience. And that's a completely free Gutenberg add-on that you can use right now to add blocks and these pre-designed sections that you're looking at right here. And they have a theme coming. And so here's uh, just a preview when you're inside of a page, there is this K right here in the top right to bring up some of the controls. Actually, I'm getting confused. That's for their block builder. It's right here actually for the page settings. So this already has the ability and it's free. Keep in mind it's free. A transparent header. Most free themes do not include a transparent header, but Cadence theme does and you can have control over your page title, your page layout in this nice visual way. So this isn't where the magic is, although this is really nice, but let me show you where the magic really is. And that's when we go into the customizer. So I'm gonna go to appearance, I'll click on customize, and you can see it's a totally reimagined customizer experience. So here's the header, and I haven't customized this at all. I'll go ahead and click on the pencil icon, and it's gonna take me right into the header builder, and it's gonna be the same for the footer. You're gonna have this very visual way to build pretty much any header design that you want. So if you're on Amazon's website and you like that e-commerce style of header, you're gonna be able to do that. So uh, here it is uh, right here. And so here's a grid for the header. You can see it's got the logo in the left, but if I wanted to move the logo in the middle, I can just drag and drop it right there. Now my logo's in the middle and I can drag different blocks into this grid right here to build a 
beautiful header that has all the different elements that you would come to expect in a modern header. So uh, for example, here's the search option. I can easily add a button. And so I can put a button right there. I wouldn't want to put a button right there, but I can put it right there. And you can see now the, the menu navigation has a button off to the right of it. So we've got several elements here that you can use for your header design. We have logo navigation, secondary navigation, search. We've got buttons, social icons, as well as HTML. And there's also sticky header and each of these has its own elements or design settings. So when I click right here into the logo, I can have the logo or a logo next to the title. There's different alignment options here. Uh, it pretty much has everything that you would come to expect. Now there's a lot more goodies in here when I go inside and look at the topography. All the options are there and colors. Let me show the colors. I really like this. So when I click on colors, you can define a color palette uh, for this website and you can assign colors to everything. It's pretty much a full featured theme and it's gonna be completely for free. So I'll add a link to the video description box down below if you wanna check that out. Uh, it's gonna be listed in the WordPress theme directory. It just takes a few months to have your theme accepted in there. Uh, but I just wanted to give you a quick glimpse of it. I've been playing around with it for the last few days. It's a really neat theme. So anyways, this is what's coming uh, very soon to WordPress and uh, what is coming in the future of WordPress. So thank you for spending this time with me. If you could do me a favor right now and click on the like button, the thumbs up button. And if you are not subscribed, why don't you subscribe to the channel for future videos just like this. And as always, if you have a question for me, you can ask it in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.